Welcome back to the setting of the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku, Azerbaijan. And competition will be resuming in just a moment or two at the 39th European Rhythmic Gymnastics Championships. On the shores of the Caspian Sea, we are unclear as to who will enter the right port, who will find safe harbour in Saturday's finals. And let's not even get started on Sunday and the apparatus finals as well. We've got a lot of business to attend to. Oh, and a team competition and world championship qualification. Three more sets of gymnasts to come today. Great to have you with us wherever you're watching from, whoever you're supporting. It really is a pleasure to have you as part of the gymnastics family for this wonderful competition. A true celebration of the Rhythmic Gymnastics Nations of Europe. So many familiar faces we're getting to see and also some new arrivals as well. That's a lovely balance to have in a championships. You want the freshness of new names coming through, waiting to become stars, but also the uh, warm smile of the familiar and seeing all of your old rhythmic gymnastics friends take to the competition floor to give the routines that uh, we know and love. Some of them bringing brand new routines to this year, some keeping routines from the previous year. In very rare circumstances, some with the same routines from a couple of years ago, actually, in the group competition, we'll see that. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's start set B. It's qualification time in the hoop and ball portion of the individual event. Set B about to take the competition floor. These are the gymnasts that you'll be watching over the next couple of hours. They'll perform two routines, hoop and ball. We will have some variation going into the second rotation. Gymnast to keep an eye on. You've got the likes of Hélène Karbanov, Mael Mie, Zora Agamirova, Yekaterina Vedenieva. Real contenders. Panayota Litra is also part of this group. And many others. We are about to begin. This is Evelina Orfanu of Cyprus, the 15-year-old from Nicosia, makes her senior European Championship debut. Getting us underway in this second set of gymnasts, Evelina Orfanu of Cyprus. Nice to see her make her senior European Championship debut. And there was real cool-headedness in her routine. She had a couple of moments where she didn't quite have the toss and catch that she might have wanted. Whoa. This dynamic balance with rotation, one example, and she really dealt with things very well. A nice start for her. Next, a 15-year-old from Brussels making her senior international debut, the reigning 
Belgian junior national champion Beatrice Valeno. That was 99% of a spot-on debut there from Beatrice Valenu at international level. Almost, almost. Nonetheless, really well done to her. It's a very nice routine, isn't it? 26.3 for Evelina Orfanu. Absolutely blind. It really is a, a lovely piece of gymnastics. Let's have a look back at her. And we haven't talked too much about the artistry score, but there is a lot of importance that is attached to things like emoting, being theatrical, really having that expression. And certainly she does that in this routine. She has worked very hard on her facial expressions and conveys what she wants to say quite well. Absolutely. It's easy to see why we're looking at a junior national champion here. She also won the open category at the French Junior Championships. Just one of those unfortunate moments towards the end of the routine, losing the ball. Again, probably the sort of thing that if she were to do it another nine times, it would be fine. But <laughs> that's the nature of elite level sport. And when you get out onto the competition floor at a European Championships, it is obviously a very different sort of environment. But she gets decent amplitude in her throws. Oh, clearly. And you're right that this stage, you prepare for it. but. There's nothing like competing out here in an arena full of fans with the light of the floor, which is very different, undoubtedly, from her training gym. It's just a different experience. And simply the walk out as well. I mean, the massive tunnel that you walk through from the uh, backstage area. You just see there those leaps nicely executed, keeping her torso uh, quite straight as she uh, goes into the leap position. And that's where, again, as we see the demonstration of the Grand Battenor, that's where she maybe over time might put some backbend into those leaps and gain a little difficulty. But that's a technically sound gymnast that we're watching there. Oh, quite clearly. Just in those horizontal fuete turns, needing to bring the leg up a fraction to get it to 90 degrees, and, and that's when the apparatus was lost. And that's a great point, because that is part of what caused the mistake, the leg being just a little bit dipped below the 90-degree angle. 22.05, the score for Beatrice Valenu. We now watch Alessia Verstappen of Belgium, the 16-year-old from East Flanders.
Nice to see right after the reigning Belgian junior champion, the reigning Belgian senior champion, Alessia Verstappen, who became the first gymnast from her country to compete as an individual at the World Championships, and that was in Sofia. History maker, this young athlete. And the ballet fundamentals in this exercise, very strong. They really are, aren't they? And she comes from a great ballet family. Her great-grandmother was a wonderful ballerina. Great man would have loved that, I'm sure, watching her perform. <laughs> Julia Neumann of Austria. And she is the reigning Austrian junior national champion. The 16-year-old from Kornerberg. occasion for a first year senior good start Julia Neumann she's from Kornerberg which is in lower Austria in the northeast of the country about 12 kilometers northwest of beautiful Vienna here's the very popular illusion turn sequence note she catches and then executes a third illusion Score for Alessia Verstappen. We're keeping you in suspense there. I can tell you it's 24.15 though. Now to a fascinating individual all the way from California making her senior international debut, Moldova's Emily Beznos. But she's always been one step ahead of the game.
we'll see all kinds of remarkable people at these championships. She is one of them. At 16, Emily Beznos is about to graduate from university with a degree in cognitive science and a specialization in computing. She is so academically outstanding that she has performed well ahead of her age for several years. Oh, and by the way, she's also an international elite rhythmic gymnast. <laughs> Absolutely outrageous. And quite a compelling performer at that. She really pulls you in and takes you on a ride with her through this exercise. And if she progresses as rapidly for Moldova internationally as she has done academically, then <laughs> heaven help the rest of them. <laughs> now to a gymnast from Austria. Valentina Dominik Ozimic for her third European Championships. Really aspiring to break into the top 50 at these championships. Valentina Dominik Osimic having got so close in Tel Aviv and she's been brilliant domestically. 24.15 for Julia Neumann, her teammate. 25.8 for Emily Beznos. Very uh, promising routine that. Let's have a look back. At Valentina Dominikosovic. She is well established as the best in Austria at the moment. In this routine, there are a few small things that she could work to improve, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Antonina Sagu of Moldova, the 18 year old from the east of the country, and at her second European Championships.
Antonina Sagu's sister Sonia organised a successful crowdfunding effort to get her to these championships. So Sonia, if you're watching this, well done. Well done, because you have allowed for your sister to have, well, frankly, a new day to begin here <laughs> in Baku. Many nice components, really nice components in this routine. There was a smoothness to it. 23.9 for Valentina Dominic Ozimic. First chance to see the Portuguese squad. From Portugal, Rita Araujo. Returning to where she made her World Championship debut in 2019, Rita Araujo. And returning with quite an ambitious routine with the hoop. She really goes for the difficulty in many of her throws. 22.75 is the score for Antonina Sagu. Yes, it was an ambitious display, as you say, from the 19-year-old from Almada. did have an overreach and adjustment to control there which will lower the, d the execution score fraction representing France Maya Lemier the 18 year old
always get such sensitivity from Maya Lemie, World Cup medalist from last year. It's quite a classically pretty routine and within that some very intricate combinations. Here her front split pivot done without help. Help of course being whether she grabs the leg or not. If she grabbed her leg that would be with help. And the throw followed by the Sinead turns. Two-handed catch into the cartwheel. And the balance in the ring position. Her fuete turns, cleanly executed. Note that her toe never comes off of the floor. The heel does, of course, but the toe doesn't. And that's not the case with all of the gymnasts. But that is the correct technique to do that. She really excels in catching the apparatus without using her hands. There's this lovely moment at the end of her routine where she does a transfer, as a matter of fact, without using the hands. And it's a, it's a wonderful way to end off of the exercise. Early days in this second set of four. The moment we're alternating between the uh, Portuguese and French squads. We're going to see Slovenia and Azerbaijan come into play in a little while. With representation from Turkey and Greece to conclude this first rotation then we'll go back round again some of the gymnasts will change in the second half we'll see Anna Mironskaya of Austria come into play we will see in the first half for Slovenia Ella Polak in the second half we'll see Brigitte Krasovets And all of that due to the intricacies of the squad selection process. Because the delegations have got to correctly select who it is that uh, they enter for the all-around and who they perhaps don't enter for the full all-around competition, but maybe just one or two pieces here and there. And it may be that some of the nations enter an all-around gymnast for only three routines, which is completely fine, but only three scores count. But it means they don't get the luxury of a discarded score. And also, they're out of contention for an apparatus final. 27.7 for Rita Araujo. That's the seventh best we've seen so far with the hoop. To her teammate. Representing Portugal, Joana Pinheiro.
16 year old from Lisbon, Joana Pinheiro, some very good signs to her gymnastics. Oh, it was just a, a pleasure to watch. The music was engaging. She has a nice sense of movement as well. Maya Mie has a nice score of 30.2 to get her campaign started. Absolutely right, though, Blythe, on that sense of musicality to Joana Pinheiro. Let's go back and have a look at it. Yes. Sometimes it can be very difficult to see where a deduction comes from, but there are a few small things, notably on her dynamic elements with rotation, and there as well, the very momentary loss of the apparatus. You saw how she modified her trajectory every now and again with some of those high throws as well. All of those things she can iron out as her senior career goes on. Now to the reigning Gymnasiade all-around and ball champion, France's Hélène Karbonov, the top schools gymnast out there from last year. Hélène Carbonov of France, a massive admirer of the great French rhythmic gymnast Delphine Ledoux. Well, she's been doing Ledoux proud with her international performances of late. 24.35 for Joana Pinheiro with the hoop. What a lovely gymnast we have in Hélène Carbonov. Oh, and what a lovely routine as well. It's a piece of music that is full of longing. The narrator is speaking to his love and saying, how long, how long will it be? But I know I will always love you. And just a, a, a wonderful piece of gymnastics, isn't it? Slovenia has brought a really good squad to these championships. This is Ella Polak. She is their reigning all-around national champion.
tell you what, there's a bright crop coming through from Slovenia. Following in the footsteps of Yekaterina Vedenieva, Ella Polak, the reigning all-around national champion at just 15. 30.7 for Elen Karbanov. And we're going to cha-cha-cha our way to Azerbaijan, the host nation about to be represented. Everyone put your giant shoulder pads away. <laughs> the moment's gone. <laughs> it didn't win, I'm afraid. It didn't win. Sorry, Finland fans. There would have been absolute euphoria had it done. <laughs> Don't get me started on Eurovision puns. Well, she's in her home city, in her home arena, and the noise is almost deafening. She will not notice, though. She's so used to performing in front of the home crowd. It's Zora Agamirova, the 21-year-old from Baku. It's her sixth European Championships. Did she go for that? Zora Agamirova of Azerbaijan. A mighty performance from the experienced gymnast who's had so many of the best moments of her career in front of this crowd. How long have we watched Zora Agamirova carry Azerbaijani rhythmic gymnastics? And you can just feel the passion, both in her performance and in this arena, the love that they have for her and the appreciation for her work. And what work? All of these rolls over multiple body segments, building her difficulty, spinning the ball on one finger, that fulfills a requirement that gymnasts must demonstrate with the ball. Changing levels, the cartwheel, manipulating the ball with different parts of her body and the Chenet turns, the unsighted catch into the illusion, all of it combining to make up an excellent routine. And as we take a look at it, there's just difficulty everywhere you look. Uh, it never stops. And that's one of the reasons that we so often find her in major finals. She is able to harness all of this. And she does it very cleanly as well. Well, we've got uh, Karia playing here and she's been the carrier of Azerbaijani at Rhythmic Gymnastics for many, many years. Zora Agamirova. Just waiting for some numbers to come in and then we'll go on with this first rotation. Hope you're enjoying it. 
So much still to come. Goodness me, we're barely scratching the surface of rhythmic gymnastics at the European Championships in 2023. We've seen some great variety so far. And we've got an absolute veteran coming up in just a moment. A world championship medalist will be taking to the competition floor. We're waiting on scores for Ella Polak and for Zora Agaminova, first of all. given a right old lift to the National Gymnastics Arena seeing Zora Agaminova the flags are waving they are still buzzing the uh, Slovenian delegation as well is uh, standing up waving their flags around they're getting ready for the most experienced of their gymnasts how lovely it is to see three gymnasts from Slovenia at these European Championships. What a time for their rhythmic gymnastics program. Yeah. 26.3 for Ella Polak, the 11th best score we've seen with the hoop so far. Representing Slovenia, Ekaterina Vedenieva, a World Championship and World Games medalist. Can she get European Championship honours in Baku? Classical turns as ever, very well performed by the gymnast who turns 29 next month. <laughs> 32.55 for Zora Agamirova. That is a wonderful start for her. That's the fourth best we've seen with the ball. And we look back at Yekaterina Vedenieva. She's such an interesting gymnast to watch because when you think about it, she came of age as a senior several codes of points ago at a time when execution was more emphasized than body difficulty and apparatus difficulty. So her balances are some of the best in the business. Hugely proud moment for this gymnast. She's been a junior European Championship medalist. The 18-year-old Ilona Zenalova from Baku, Azerbaijan, now takes to the European stage at senior level.
She's just won three medals at the national championships in this arena. She trains in the training gym every day here. But still, when you step out for a European Championships, it's not your home arena anymore. It's a different place, and she did very well. She did really well, indeed. She was somewhat of a late entrant to this competition. Just joined the lineup a few days ago, if I'm not mistaken. But she looks very prepared, and she's got a lovely fluidity to her movement. Tremendous flexibility in her back as well. A great releve position. All these little details that just add up and, and make her work quite special. She's got great promise. During this routine here and there, she needed to make a few small adjustments to make sure that everything went smoothly. But it is a learning experience considering how she is so young and this is such a big stage. And better to see her make those small adjustments than to commit a major error, which she didn't do. And she gave us things like this lovely side split turn. It is always nice to see an occasion handled, isn't it? Always nice to see. Just a classic dynamic balance combined with the roll over two body segments. That's slightly less classic. <laughs> no, it's marginally less balletic. <laughs> Very pleased, though, weren't they, the home fans with those two performances from Zona Agamirova and Ilona Zainalova. Just having a few delays here and there, waiting for some numbers to come in. And it gives us just a moment to think about what is coming next, which is set C after the next rotation has taken place. And in there, we'll be looking at gymnasts from the Czech Republic, from Croatia, from Finland, Estonia, Hungary, Poland, the Netherlands. Yes, back at last after 20 years. How wonderful it will be to see them. Norway will be there, Switzerland as well. And I tell you what, we've got to start thinking and talking about Swiss rhythmic gymnastics more often because there have been some really encouraging signs from there. Not a nation with a, a great track record in rhythmic gymnastics, but that could change. 27.3 for Ilona Zinalova. And 31.55 for Ekaterina Vodinieva. That's the fourth best we've seen with the hoop so far. Returning to the European Championships, having missed the 2022 edition, is Turkiye's Victoria Sidorova. The 18-year-old is an undergraduate at Atatürk University.
everything you touch turns to gold. She did touch some gold recently. She went to uh, the competitions in Antalya, her hometown, in artistic gymnastics at the European Championships, stood with the Turkey team, was absolutely inspired by their success. And it's really, you can see, it's fired her up and made her determined at the Rhythmic Euros. She does a really good job of putting her own stamp on this routine. The turning leaps with the double stag position, the first time we've seen that today. Several other elements chosen very carefully. Representing Greece, the 20-year-old Maria Dervisi. She competed at the European Championships in 2019 in Baku. They're an incredible sporting family, the Dervises. When Maria competes at the Mediterranean Games, she carried on a proud family tradition going back to when her granddad, George, won a water polo bronze medal at the 1951 Games in Alexandria. In Egypt, I mean, they must have heard some carried on a proud family tradition going routine the turning leaps with the double stag position the first time we've seen that today several other elements chosen very carefully representing Greece the 20 year old Maria Dervisi she competed at the European Championships in 2019 in Baku.
They're an incredible sporting family, the Dervises. When Maria competes at the Mediterranean Games, she carried on a proud family tradition going back to when her granddad George won a water polo bronze medal at the 1951 Games in Alexandria in Egypt. I mean, they must have heard some stories around the dinner table as a family. Oh, that's incredible. And often we see that, don't we, Ollie, in sporting families, kind of one generation informing another, even if it's a different sport. Well, her sister, Ekaterini, competed at the European Championships in Budapest. Her teammate, or rather uh, the Turkey gymnaster, Victoria Sidorova, scores 26.95. Apologies, I nearly changed the nationality of her Maria de Vici there for a moment. Getting so caught up in that incredible sporting family. Her brother, Yorios, an Olympic silver medalist in water polo. I mean, we could go on all day about them. From Turkey, Nehir Serap Özdemir, the 17-year-old at Bashkent University High School. intensity about her as a gymnast Nahir Serap Özdemir it nearly worked so well as a performance twenty seven point four five is the score for Maria Dervisi with the ball so much that's really good about this young gymnast just like her teammate, she's somebody who's quite clearly settled into her own style. And here, unfortunately, we can count the steps and the lunge forward and the execution deductions that are implicated therein. But overall, it was just a nice, fun routine to watch, wasn't it? Absolutely right. You could see that moment, unfortunately, when she realized the trajectory was off and had to really fly towards it. A gymnast who really made waves last season, Panayota Litra of Greece, the 16-year-old reigning national champion and the World Cup medalist from last year in Athens.
absolutely a gymnast who hits positions. She is sharp. Fana Yota Litra. Technically very enjoyable. Technically excellent. Just like you said, Ali, sharp is the word to describe the way that she hits her balances. Things are held to the split 180 degrees all the way. It's been so exciting to watch her mature as a gymnast. She burst onto the scene last year with her World Cup bronze medal and has continued. 25.7. The score for Nahir Serap Ozdemir. Yes, that emergence of Panayota Litra was very exciting. It, it happened in the most um, poetic of places at her <laughs> home World Cup in Athens. This is what's coming up in the second rotation. We'll see some new gymnasts coming into play, such as Arena Mironskaya of Austria. We didn't see her in the first rotation. We'll also see Brigitte Krashevets of Slovenia. She uh, will come in for Ella Polak. Otherwise, it is the same set of gymnasts that returns. And we just have the score to bring you for Paniota Litra with the ball before we can really get our teeth into the second rotation of set B. Amazing to think we're not too far away from the halfway point of this first day of competition. Time flies when you're having fun. And it has been fun, hasn't it, Blythe? Oh, it's been loads of fun. And there's still so much more to come. We're grateful to have your company wherever you're watching from. Thank you for joining these European Championships of Rhythmic Gymnastics, the 39th of their kind, being held once again at the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku in Azerbaijan. Around about 200 senior gymnasts competing. They were held for the very first time in 1978 the Rhythmic Gymnastics European Championships in Madrid. And they will be enjoying their gymnastics in Spain later in the year as the World Championships go to Valencia, beautiful part of the world. The 1980 Championships took place in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, and that feels like the right time to talk about that because we've got the Netherlands returning to individual competition at the European Championships for the first time in 20 years in the next set of gymnasts. And most importantly of all, we've got a good old set of Eurovision classics playing <laughs> because that's something you can guarantee to get when you're at the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku because Azerbaijan does love its Eurovision. And if you don't, well, you're in for a very long four days is all I can say <laughs> because we'll be uh, hearing a lot of it. But I do love Eurovision. You do as well, don't you, Blake?